services, made men party promotion, microwave marketing, Gibby Punch Cocktails, and Chris Gibbs Foundation. Yes, yes. That's a lot of stuff, sir. We're yes. going to try to get into as you, much as possible. Entrepreneur. Okay, let's talk about the Gibby Punch real quick. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. The drink himself. Like, tell me, how you do that, man? What's, how you, like, where do you get the idea from? I know your, your name, but what? Oh, the Gibby Punch, um, yeah. it's basically like a spin on the classic New York Nutcracker. You know what I'm saying? It's a spin, um, but I took a little further. I got added flavors. Like I have over 20 flavors. Okay. So now I'm finna ask you, what's the New York Duck Cracker? I don't know. Oh, you wanna know what the is? Uh-uh. Oh, man, you should have told me, man. I gotta get y'all some Duck Cracker, man. Basically, like a little drink, like a little, it's like a little cocktail that you sell, like in a little bottle or whatever. You know, like in the streets of New York, this big in the summertime. Things like that, you know what I'm saying? Like I started doing it upstate New York, and I'm gonna definitely do it out here. Hold on, real quick. Do you do music? Um... I play around with it. I used to rap. Because I hear Buster Rhymes all, like, I do a little bit. I, like, I can hear that, bro. I used to like, rap. I, you know, I, I used to rap, but I feel like so many people started rapping. They kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I lose interest in things when other people are doing the same. You know, I'm ready for the next thing. That's why I did a million that's, and one that's businesses New York in, right there. in 14 years. Y'all you know be I mean? so fast. So, like, um, people always say, you need to move to New York. I'm, I'm, I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm not, I'm too, New York will be too fast for me. And I ain't even gonna lie, New York is so fast. Is it? It's overrated. That's the reason why you have so many people from New York fiending to go everywhere. They, yeah. They're rushing Atlanta, they're rushing Charlotte, they're rushing Florida, they're rushing California because the quality of life is low. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like the lifestyle is intriguing. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like the club, for example. You know, when you first start going to the club, you're excited, you're happy, but then like three, four, five years in the club, it's like you start to see it for what it's really worth. You know, mm. Gosh, mm. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the club. You know what I'm saying? Now I want to come to the real. You know what I'm saying? That's why you just said it's a good place to visit, but not. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. exactly. I think everybody kind of feels like that with everywhere they live, especially when they're yeah, born. Yeah, yeah. I'm know like that with Atlanta, but I can't leave because everything is here. But I'm so sick of Atlanta. I'm like, it is not all that. And it's hard but to I'm appreciate something here. that you have. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's something that you've grown numb to. And I right. think that's what the case is sometimes, too. Like, sometimes you've grown we numb always to it. I think sometimes we always assume the grass is greener. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Sometimes it is, but other times it's not. Right. So you, um, you're a serial entrepreneur. You've been doing this forever. Like, what, what let you know that like I'm like this is in me. Like I'm going to be a creator. Like I'm I'm going to constantly create. How do you how do you keep creating? I mean, to be honest, um, I think my whole life since I've been doing so much, I've been having a lot of people tell me the same thing over and over. You got to pick one thing. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick one thing. You got to master that thing. You got to continue to dig in that one hole because it's like trying to dig for gold sometimes you dig a little bit and you dig a little bit and you dig you got to find one spot and just keep digging you know and eventually you'll, you'll find it so i think my whole life i was told that and i was constantly trying to search for this one thing until i realized i just don't fit that mold mm. you know what i'm saying i have a lot of ideas i have a lot of visions i have a lot of things you know what i'm saying i want to do like i want to bring you all these ideas to life you know what i'm saying you have one life to live so instead of me trying to pick one thing and just do that one thing i'd rather pick a bunch of stuff and delegate it you know what I'm saying? I have a fiance, so she's automatically obligated to be involved in anything mm -hmm. I do. You know what I'm saying? I have two kids that are getting older, so I'm going to be putting them to work soon. You know what I mean? I have a great foundation. I got a lot of people in my corner, so I'm going to do it all. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I, I can it. do, you know what I'm saying? My kids going to do. And I what like I love it. most, I'm sorry, what I love most about him is, even though he does a lot of stuff, how he even came into um, conversation is, I think I posted something and he commented on it was like, you need to let my wife do your hair. Yes, and yes. that that was everything for me. Like that told me the kind of person you were before even going to your page, before finding out who you are, before finding out what you do. I was like, the fact that he pushed his queen like that. I literally had to make a post about it. I made a I post remember. on Instagram and uh -huh. Facebook. And said it on air. You and remember? Said it on, yeah. I said it, it on air. It actually brought us a lot of clients too. Yeah. It so so the fact so that appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. The fact that you do so much and you still put your queen on a pedestal for her to be able to. Do you feel like um, your drive pushes her more? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and my wife push each other. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been doing a lot. Like, I've been doing a lot of things. Um, I had my wife for about eight years. Like, I'm 33. She's 25. You know what I'm saying? She has skills that I still have yet to develop. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Eight years younger. So I think it's a situation where, you know what I'm saying, we both motivate each other. And the truth of the matter is, you know what I'm saying, she's a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's a master of her craft. She's humble. She has this superstar potential. Sometimes you just got to just take a step back and you got to let the star play on the team 
You know what I mean? Do they think it's like chess? You know, they say life is chess. What's the what's the most aggressive, strongest piece? It's your queen. Your queen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's you better your, say it. You know what I'm saying? It's your queen. Wow. I'm actually saying that, you know, because we had a great night. You know what I'm saying? She bought some steaks. I think she made a steak and fish later. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm actually on the building Viper. foundation now. But yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we push each other to be better. What, I was about to say that too. Um, like, even the way when he came to the media, the, to the event, like he stood up, he's like, "Hey, I got some flyers. My my uh, my my wife uh, is a cosmetologist. Like, and it was funny because there was another cosmetologist. He gave her the flyer. Like, bro, <laughs> like, yeah, everybody gonna get this flyer. Let's collab. Yeah, let's work together. Absolutely. Now, tell me about this microwave marketing. What is that? I right, know. Um, I started off. I'm doing a party promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like promoting for clubs. And then the clubs that I was promoting for, you know, you know the club scene go. There's fights. The clubs will get shut down. The liquor license will get taken away. So I'm bouncing around from club to club, and I'm doing promoting, and I'm making money, but I'm realizing, like like I said, like the lane is so, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, the type of people that was at the club weren't, like, high, vibrating people. just wasn't really my lane anymore. So um, I started working with a couple restaurants. I just walked in, and I told them, look, you know what I'm saying? I have a large following. I showed them my Facebook. I told them, look, you know, I could really get your business booming. And I tried to reach out to restaurants that weren't really getting any business, you know, that were on their last leg, that were willing to do anything. And I started, um, I actually started off with the um, Roof Garden restaurant in Schenectady, New York. Um, I did some work with Memphis King. I did some work with Stickies. These are all great places upstate New York. Make sure you check them out. Look, I'm marketing right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but basically, um, I went from marketing to me, managing artists i had some artists i was pushing and then it's like eventually i just realized i had the midas touch i realized anything i, I push it. anything that i get involved in is gonna pop mm -hmm. but from me doing that i started helping the wrong people and helping people that once they got their legs underneath them they ran off on me and they you know what i'm saying so then i realized i had to be very like now that i have this ability to make anything pop i have to be very selective Mm -hmm. what I attach myself to and who I attach myself to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just said that, bro. I'm, learn yeah. I'm learning that yeah. now. That's why I looked over there like... I've been burned so many times. You know what I mean? Life is constant trial and error. Constant trial and error. I think that, I think that the stretches in my life that I was scared to make mistakes were the stretches where I was growing the least. You know what I'm saying? You have to get out there. You got to speak. You got to do what you do. You make mistakes and you learn from them. But that's the thing. You have to learn. Not only do you have to learn, you have to apply. Because there's some people that learn a lesson and they'll do the same thing over again. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to learn a lesson. You have to apply and adjust and move on. You know what I'm saying? I used to dwell. I used to be upset. Like, damn, I just missed this opportunity. Like, damn, man, I'm in New York and this is going on over here. But I realize you can't dwell. You got to go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Make it happen. Look, just it's soaking up all the knowledge like, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Chris came you know with the knowledge this morning. I love it. I love it. So who do you get this from? Because some people can't be this bright in a room. They can't just walk in. Like, literally, any room you go, like, when you came to the panel, you literally was like, hey, I got something to say, yeah. X, Y, Z. Where some people will be like, I'll just wait. I'll, you know, who who do you get this from in your family? I mean, um, I'm not going to lie. Like, my mother is the same way. Like, mm -hmm. she's the same way. Like, sometimes, you're like, I'll be around my friends and she'll come in the room and I'll be excited. Like, this is in New York. You know what I'm saying? I'll be kind of like, yo, mom. You know what I mean? Like, we chilling. We talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, 30-year-old men type stuff. And she'll come in the room and she'll take all the attention. And I'll love her. And she'll be talking about what's going on on the shade room and Super Sense. You know, stuff I don't know. <laughs> That's Irish. You know what I'm saying? Bro. And then it's like, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So my mother is definitely a person that, um, I would say, gave me a lot of qualities. Um, but to be honest, I think it's just something that you just have to be born with. Mm hmm you know, and I think that um, uh, my whole life, like, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm a very humble person, but I think sometimes you just have to accept your role, you know what I'm saying? And accept, like, what you were destined to be. You know what I'm saying? I love like, it. If I was destined to be the person that's going to glow and be the person that's going to make an impact and leave a legacy, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to admit that. I'm not going to try to be humble and dim that light. And I feel like once I just started accepting, like, my God-given role, like, it just grew. Look, uh, this, yeah. And I always say I feel like, and again, I'm not even from New York, so I can't say, oh, you're from New York, that's why you're saying that. But I always feel like anybody from up top just has a certain hustle that South doesn't have. And, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. My husband's family is from New York. He would say... One day he he'll say he's from New York. Next day he'd be like, Nah, I'm from Atlanta. Like he'll, he'll when I first met him, I swear that dude was from New York. <laughs> right, but he has that hustle mentality, 
if it wasn't for my husband, it would probably take me even longer to become an entrepreneur. Like, I didn't even know I had entrepreneur abilities. I just wouldn't ever 100% go about it. Like, I was writing a book. I didn't even know that I could be an entrepreneur writing a book. I had a job, and I was selling books on the side, not thinking, why don't you quit this job and you can really focus on X, Y, Z. It's different stuff that I've tried, but I've always had a job with it. So when my mm-hmm. husband and I got together, he was like, oh, you better quit that job. I'm like, oh, that's security. Like, I need that. And he was like, mm-hmm. no, you're not. And I literally, in the six years we haven't, uh, we've been together, I haven't had to work. And it's not me living off of him. I've been doing my thing, and he does his thing. Uh-huh. It's that up north mentality. That's amazing. And I actually did the same thing with my wife. Um, she's working with Tom on the cable. She's making about $50,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but she had to go to school. And I told her, like, look, you know what I'm saying? You can make, you know what I mean? You can make that money, no problem. But, like, more important, it wasn't about making money. Her passion was to do hair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what gets us sometimes. Like, a lot of times, our passion might not make us the money as our career. So we choose our career over our passion. That's so true. But sometimes when you just absorb your passion, like, this is what I was meant to do. This is what I'm going to do. Eventually, it unfolds. And, you know what I'm saying? The universe rewards you, you know? But she did the same thing. She quit a job. And then she went to school. When you go to school, she wasn't really making... I mean, I mean, you know, she was still taking clients here mm-hmm. and there. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't making the money that she's making now. You know what I mean? It was definitely a process. You know what I'm saying? But you build through the process, and you respect the process. You know, like even right now, like, I've been out here a month and a half. In Schenectady, I can make a dollar like this. Out here, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? And it's not the same, you know, but... I believe in a process. Like, I was at this great event. I'm going to be working with this um, company called I Am Academy. Big shout out, Abel Melendez. I'm actually wearing the speaker tag that I got mm-hmm. as a way to manifest so that by the next event, you know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'll be speaking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah, like, basically, you just have to just manifest, you know what I'm saying, all the things you want and just, you know what I'm saying, bring it to reality. It happens. I love it. All right. Anything else you want? Like that was that was a word right there. That was a. If you want to tell anybody, that was pretty much it right there. Yeah, I mean, um, um, before I get out of here, um, I just want to tell people, yo, just get out there and serve your purpose. Like serving your purpose is like so major because when you serve your purpose, it gives you a type of fulfillment that money can't give you. You can have girls, you can have cars. It don't matter what you have, like. If you're not serving your purpose, you're going to always be empty. Mm. That's why you got these dudes right now. They're rappers, they're entertainers. And we look at them like, how can you be depressed? How can you be miserable? You're overdosing on drugs. You're doing because they have this void. Because you know what? Maybe their purpose wasn't to catch such channels. You know what I mean? Maybe they were supposed to be the next black senator. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Maybe their purpose wasn't to be working at Time Warner Cable selling cable. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they were supposed to be here at the radio station, starting their own radio station and getting a great team underneath them, like Hits 92.3 have. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you do, you find your purpose, you serve your purpose, and you follow me on Instagram. And if you a woman, you make sure you book with my wife. Yay Touch, Amani A. Stevens, that's Y-E-H-S underscore T-O-U-C-H. And if you are a man, you make sure you book with my wife. Oh, yeah. Because I'm secure <laughs> when she got a real dude at home, so we ain't worried about that. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, it's Y-E-H-S underscore T-O-U-C-H. And my name is Chris Gates, by the way. We love it. Thank you so much for coming Thanks out. For Thank you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. So we're going to take a break. We got to do some pictures and some drops, so we'll be right back. Lick Morning Show hits 92.3.